You can see when you bite into it, it makes like little stripes of green. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. I am in my kitchen in my apartment. And today I'm gonna to show you a recipe from my new cookbook, Dessert Person. It is for pistachio pinwheels. And this is a recipe I plan on making this holiday season. I know that this time of year looks really different for a lot of folks, but it's all the more reason to get in the kitchen and find some comfort in baking. One thing I discovered while writing this book is that I really like eating cookies, but I don't love making cookies because to me, they're not as exciting as other kinds of desserts like cakes or pies, which can use seasonal produce. But that said, the holidays is one time where I do get really into cookie baking, but I have important criteria for a cookie recipe. I don't want a recipe to be something I have to sit there and painstakingly decorate just to make it look festive. So one reason why I really like this pistachio pinmeal cookie is that they're self-decorating. Like the decoration is baked into the cookie, literally. One of the things that makes this recipe, I think, easier than it might appear is that there is one base dough that creates the two colors and the whole thing comes together in the food processor. The first step is going to be grinding the pistachios. Obviously, this is an important ingredient. They are pistachio pinwheels. Just so you have maximum contrast in the final cookie between the green spiral and the rest of the cookie, try to find super green pistachios. And if you can find blanched ones, that's even better. These pistachios are actually unblanched, so they have that papery skin on them. It's not that important, but the more skins you remove, the greener that spiral will be. All right, so into the food processor, and I'm gonna pulse it because I wanna grind them to a fine powder, but I do not wanna make pistachio butter. So the more finely ground you get your pistachios, the more even that green layer will be. Okay, so this looks good. And now I'm gonna build the rest of the dough. So the first thing that goes in is some room temperature butter and then powdered sugar. So that goes right in. And also, because we're using the food processor, you don't have to sift it. It's fine if there's lumps, those will all smooth out. Now the first thing is to process this together until the mixture is light and creamy and a little fluffy. I remember as a kid, my mom would be baking something. And I just remember like eating the butter and sugar and being like, there is no more delicious thing in the world than butter and sugar mixed together. And I still stand by that. So now to this, we're gonna add two yolks. I'm also gonna add some almond extract. Almond extract is divisive. Some people hate it. I love it. If you don't like it, use vanilla. If you don't want to use vanilla, you could put a little like lemon zest in there. All right, so here's my dough. Now it's time to divide my dough and to create the two layers. The plain almond version is the base of the cookie. The pistachio version goes on top. So I actually want two thirds of the dough for the almond and one third for the pistachio. This is for the almond. That remaining third, I'm gonna leave in the food processor and just put it aside. To the two thirds mixture, I add my almond flour. And this I'm gonna work in with the spatula until I have a uniform smooth dough. This version is actually from unblanched almonds. So this has some brown specks. So that just means that I'll have more kind of texture in my layers. I first wanna spread out the almond dough and then I'm gonna chill that while I do the pistachio, just so that layer has a chance to firm up. This is where it makes sense not to rush anything because the more even a slab you have, the better your pinwheels are gonna look. Now, if you're really a stickler for straight edges, as I am, you can even fold up the edges of the parchment paper. So you're kind of making like an envelope and that will just flatten everything out and help fill in some of those edges so you have really straight sides. So in order to create a solid surface for applying the pistachio dough, I wanna chill this in the refrigerator so the butter firms up and the whole dough becomes more solid. And now I'm gonna finish making the pistachio dough. So the ground pistachios go in and I'm gonna pulse this until I have a nice uniform green color. Once you have the dough kind of forming like a little bit of a ball around the blade of the mixer, that's when you're basically there. When someone invents a food processor where nothing gets stuck, that'll be a great day. Basically what I do is take the pistachio dough and make dollops of it all around the surface of the almond. I'm gonna go right to the edges on the short sides, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of a lip on the longer sides. Even though it's the same dough, that just helps make a nicer looking spiral. I think this is good. The last thing to do is to roll this up. I say like a jelly roll. I don't know if that's a meaningful reference for people because I don't know who makes jelly rolls anymore, but basically you just roll it into a spiral. You coax the dough to fold onto itself, take this little folded edge of parchment and hover it above the dough and kind of pull it away from me so it's horizontal with the surface. Now I'm gonna roll the entire thing in the parchment paper. I take the side furthest from me, I actually fold it 
up and over. And now I've sealed that longer edge. I wanna show you a great trick for getting a very round log of dough. I'm pulling one end down and around toward me. And then take any kind of long straight edge. This is a tool for chocolate work. Um, I don't know why I bought it. I don't really do chocolate work, but it is convenient to have. And you're going to angle this down and into that crease. And I'm going to push toward the dough. This is eliminating air pockets. It is applying a little bit of pressure. And now I have something very, very round. And this has to chill before I can slice it. Okay, so I actually have a swap that I'm gonna show you of an already chilled log of dough. And the only reason I'm telling you that is because that is the version where I went and peeled the pistachios. It took me like an hour. And actually looking at the version that I just put in that was slightly darker, I kind of like that color better. So I'm just saying it right now, there is really no point in peeling your pistachios. It's super, super solid. This has been actually in the freezer because I made it a couple days ago and then I let it thaw overnight in the fridge. And one reason why I love slice and bake is because like then the whole thing is ready to go and you make a bunch of cookies. The last step before I slice is to coat the entire exterior of the log in some demerara sugar. And sometimes when I do a slice and bake cookie, I'll coat the exterior in a little egg wash to get the sugar to stick, but I don't have any problems getting the sugar to adhere to this dough. So this gives it a little extra sweetness, obviously, a little nice crunch, and also kind of a sparkly border, which is really nice. All right, so that looks good. It's well coated. I'm just gonna slice off a really thin layer from the side, and that's to expose that green spiral, which you can see. When you're slicing the cookies, I have a couple of tips for keeping the shape round and even. I'm using a thin bladed, very sharp knife, because you don't want it to force itself down into the dough and separate it. The other tip is to constantly rotate the log as you cut, and that is to basically prevent any one side from flattening on the surface. So the more you kind of move the log around and cut, the more round it'll be. Wow, so this spiral is looking really, really nice. You can see how it's a little thinner in the middle and at the end, and that is because we basically like tapered off the thickness of that slab. They spread a little bit, they don't spread a lot. Leave at least an inch in between the cookies. While I cut the other half, I'll probably just throw this in the fridge just so it doesn't warm up too much. And then I'm gonna cut the rest and we're gonna bake. It doesn't matter what temperature it is outside. It definitely hasn't been outside today, so I don't know, but it is always at 1,000 degrees in here when I have this on. I'm gonna bake these all at the same time in the oven, so I want one tray on the upper third and one tray on the lower third. I baked them until I started to see a golden brown edge I want the bottom to be about this color. So now I'm just gonna transfer them to this wire rack. They'll cool very, very quickly. This is the kind of cookie I prefer. Buttery, tender, and also lovely in its flavor of almond and pistachio. Mm. Mm. I love that lovely like sable texture. It kind of dissolves in your mouth. Mm, they're really good fresh too. So I highly recommend this recipe for the holidays. It's freezable, you can make a lot at once. It has a beautiful built-in decoration. And even though the holidays are gonna be different this year, that's no reason not to get in the kitchen and bake something that makes you happy. So happy baking this holiday season, and I hope you give this a try.